Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, let us take a look into add scope annotation. Well, the latest version of Spring PMOC defines six types of scopes singleton, prototype, request, session, application, and WebSocket. The last four scopes, such as request, session, application, and WebSocket, are available in WebAware application. So, in this video, we are going to see how to use add scope annotation to define singleton and prototype bin scopes. Well, add scope annotation is used to define a scope of the spring bin. We use add scope annotation to define a scope of the bin that is created using add component annotation or add bin annotation. Well, we are going to use add scope annotation to define singleton scope. Well, here singleton scope means only one instance of the bin is created and shared across the entire application and this singleton scope is basically a default scope all right so in case of singleton scope spring ioc container will create only one instance of that particular bin and that instance will be shared across the entire application okay next prototype well in case of prototype scope a new instance of the bin is created every time it is requested well it doesn't matter how many times you request the spring bin spring container will create a new instance for each and every request but in case of singleton scope only one instance of the bin is created and it is shared across the entire application it means it doesn't matter how many times you request a spring bin from the application context so application context will return a same instance of the bin each and every time all right so this is the difference between singleton and prototype scopes Next, let me write the code and let me demonstrate the usage of singleton and prototype scopes. So let's go to our project in IntelliJ IDEA and here let me quickly create a new package first. So go to base package, right click new and then choose package. Let's view package name as scope and within a scope, let's quickly create a class. Let's give a name as singleton bean. All right. And within this singleton bean class, let's quickly create a constructor singleton bean. And within this constructor, let me put the system dot out print in and let me print this class name. All right. So whenever Spring IOC container will create the bean for this class, then this constructor will get called. Okay. Next, let us annotate this class with add component annotation so that spring container can automatically create a spring bean for this class next let's create a one more class and let's call it as prototype bean all right within this class let's quickly create a constructor as well prototype bean and within this constructor let's have a system dot print and statement and then let us print the class name all right, so whenever Spring IOC container create the Spring Bean for this class, then this constructor will get called and then this statement will be printed in a console, isn't it? Next, let us annotate this class with add component annotation. Okay, now we have created two classes and we have annotated these two classes with add component annotation. Okay, next what we will do, we will use a scope. So go to singleton bin class let's annotate this class with at scope annotation and let's pass the scope type so here let's use value attribute and then pass singleton value all right so instead of passing the hardcoded value spring provides a constant so here let me have a configurable bin factory interface it has a constant that is scope singleton and if you look at here it has a value singleton okay so instead of passing the singleton hard, hard coded value we can use this constant okay perfect next let's go to prototype bin class let's annotate this class with add scope annotation and let us pass the value so let's use configurable bin factory it has a scope prototype constant and this constant this provides a value prototype okay perfect Next, in order to test the usage of add scope annotation, let's go to main method and let's get the spring beans from the spring IOC container and then we'll see how spring container will return the 
spring beans for these two classes so go to main entry point class go to main method and within this main method let me remove this code and let me only keep the context object so this context object is nothing but a spring container and it contains all the spring beans now let us retrieve the singleton and prototype spring beans from this context object so here let's have a singleton bean object and then context dot get bin and then pass singleton bin class type now we have retrieved spring bean upper type singleton bin class next let us retrieve another spring bean upper type singleton bin class so here let me copy this and let me paste it over here and let me rename this as a singleton bin 1 this is singleton bin 2 and let me paste one more time and let me call it as singleton bin 3 okay now we have retrieved three spring beans from the application context next let us retrieve the spring bean of type prototype bean class so here let's have prototype bean class and then context dot get bin method and then pass prototype class type over here now we have retrieved prototype bean next let us retrieve the same bean multiple times from the application context so here let me copy this and paste it here and let's call it as prototype bin 1 and this is prototype bin 2 and let me paste one more time and this is prototype bin 3 okay next let's run this program and let's analyze the result and there we go notice here singleton bin is printed only once but you can see prototype bin is printed three times well here let me print the hash code of these objects so that you will understand better so here let me write the system dot out println statement so just type the shortcut sys out this will give system dot out println and here just call the hash code method of this singleton bin one object so this statement will basically print the hash code of this object next here let's have a sys out statement and then singleton bin 2 and then call its hash code method and similarly here let's put the system dot out println statement and then call singleton bin 3 it has hash code method and similarly here also let's call sys out and then prototype bin 1 dot hash code and then here sys out prototype bin 2 dot hash code and here also out and then prototype bin 3 dot hash code so here basically we have printed the hash code for these objects so that we can easily understand the object uniqueness okay so hash code basically returns the unique unique code for each object isn't it so here let us run the program again and just notice the hash code over here so if you can notice the hash code the same hash code is printed three times okay because if you can notice the code over here we have retrieved three objects from the application context and application context return the same object three times okay and if you can notice the hash code each object has a unique hash code right and you can you can look at the hash code over here so same hash code is printed three times it means application context created the single object for this class and whenever we retrieve the same object multiple times then application context return the same object that's why you can able to see the same hash code is printed over here all right so it doesn't matter how many times you request the object application context return the same object all right next you can see the prototype bin objects so we have retrieved prototype bin object three times and you can see the hash code is different for each and every object it means application context basically create the new object for each request that's why you can able to see the hash code is different for each object all right it doesn't matter how many times you request a spring bean for a prototype bean class then application context will create a new instance for each and every you know request all right so this is how you can see the difference between singleton scope and prototype scope 
Well, one more important point is by default, Spring provides singleton scope for each Spring bean. For example, if you go to singleton bean class over here, and if you don't specify the scope explicitly using add scope annotation, then by default, Spring will provide singleton scope for this Spring bean. Okay. So in order to demonstrate this, let me comment out this add scope annotation, annotation statement and let's go to main method and here let me run the application again and if you can notice here the same hash code is printed three times all right great so this is all about add scope annotation